let me give you an overview of integration. It's going to be a theory session today. Uh, an overview. First, we will understand what is an integration, how it works. And then tomorrow, we will get into the workday system and we will start with reports. Okay. After reports, we will build the integrations. So this is an integration architecture. Okay. We all in our college times, we have seen architectural diagrams and all that. So this is the same. This shows as how the integration interacts with the UI system of Workday. So what happens is, let's say you and me are the users and the developers or users, whatever you call it as. So we use UI, which is Workday, Workday UI, and we do our configurations in English. Okay, in a simple English language, we do our configuration. How does that interact or how does that pull the data from the system? That's what we are going to see. And that's what this architecture diagram shows. So as a, as a UI person, as a developer, Workday developer, whatever I have to retrieve from Workday, I go directly to the Workday environment, Workday UI, and I do the configuration. Okay, I give the task or I create an integration or I create a report. So what happens is this uh, simple English with the help of HTML5, it will interact with the UI server. It will go to the UI server. It will convert whatever you have given, whatever you have asked for, it will convert that into an XML and it will take the data from object management system, OMS, object management system, and it will give you the output. XML is the base language. Please remember, it's an interview question. XML is the base language in Workday. You build a report, you build an integration, the first output you get is in XML. Okay. Although we can see, in, we, we can download it in an Excel, we can see in a tabular, column, uh, tabular column, but then the base language is XML. So all the interactions are done using XML. This XML targets the object management system, OMS. It targets the OMS. It gets the data from OMS and, it's, and it gives you back the data. Now, let's say... OMS is not responding. Okay, there's a the server is down. OMS server is down. Where is the data getting saved? So the data is getting saved from getting saved at persistent store. Please write down the data is getting saved at persistent store. From persistent store, the data is pulled, goes to OMS and it shows up in your screen in Workday. Now, this is for the simple UI, okay? When we are triggering a business process or whatever we are doing, it works like that. What happens in integration? The same concept happens in integration. It's just that instead of UI server, there is a server called as integration server. So when the system or us, okay, when we do the configuration, when we add the report, at that point of time, a data is uh, requested in the integration server. It converts it in, into an XML. It goes to the persistent store. It takes the data from OMS. Got it? Simple process. There is no complication at all. Okay. From the UI, it goes to UI server. From UI server, it uses XML to get the data from object management system. Object management system in turn asks persistent store to give the data. So again, the data is received and it is sent back to the user. The same concept is applied in what is this integration? How does it work? What are the different types of integration? That's what we are going to see. Why do we use these integration? Where all is it used? So. We have the Workday application. We all know, we all have been practicing. We have a Workday application. In Workday application, there are two different types of APIs. 
one is public API and the other one is custom API. These public APIs are already stored in Workday. Okay, there are these are public APIs are built inside the Workday itself. It is already there in Workday. You don't have to do anything. It is already there in Workday. So what happens is that this API is used for various purposes to send various data on various modules. For example, there is a benefits provider. Okay, there is, uh, let's say, uh, LIC, okay, LIC insurance. So if your company is tied up with LIC insurance, if your company is tied up with LIC insurance, in that case, the worker data has to go to LIC system. Once it goes, the LIC system has to take the data, update the data in their system, then take the data and send it back to Workday, correct? In order to update the Workday system as well, saying that, okay, so-and-so policy has been applied for this particular employee. So for these kind of purposes, we use integration. This is benefits example. We use for payroll. How does this payroll work? You have your salary coming up. All your data is in Workday. Okay. So Workday has only four uh, inbuilt payroll options. Okay. Only for four countries. It's an interview question. Okay. It has only for four countries. I think one is U US, UK, Canada, and France. US, UK, Canada, and France. Only for four countries, Workday provides payroll. So in that case, there's no problem because employee data is there in Workday. Payroll is also running in Workday. No problem. What happens if it is for India or Germany? Okay. So in such case, what happens is every company will have their own payroll provider. Okay. Their own payroll company. So what these companies will do is, uh, let's say you are working in CTS India. CTS India has a payroll company XYZ. So every time the payroll details, as in how many days you have worked, how many hours you have worked, how many leaves you have taken, uh, is there any LOP, is there any extra working hours? So all that data is every time it is sent to that XYZ company to process the payroll. They will deposit the salary in your account in name of Cognizant. Okay. So what Workday does is Workday has a payroll integrations. It's a separate module, but I'm giving you an example. It has a payroll integrations. <coughs> All the data <coughs> like the employee name, employee phone number, address, uh, tax details. Why do I say tax details? Because let's say, <coughs> uh, let's say in US, for example, every state has different tax. Okay. So if an employee is working in California, he has a different tax. If he's working in Texas, he has a different tax. So that data has to be sent to the payroll system. So that's the reason we build payroll integrations. Pichi or Picoff. P-E-C-I. Pichi. Picoff. P-I-C-O-F. Picoff. Okay. Pichi or Picoff. We build these integrations. We send the data, whatever the data the uh, company is asking for. For example, the name, phone number, email address, what is his uh, absence data, what is his time off data. All that data, we send it to the employee uh, to the payroll company and we build an integration for that those are all custom integrations okay those are all custom integration why is it a custom integration because we are building these integrations with third party system okay with third party system now let's say for example workday is tied up with abc payroll company for india ABC payroll company for India. There is a tie up. So in this case, what happens is ABC company will give a specific template. Okay. Excel sheet, a 
template to Workday and Workday will load that template in the Workday system. So now when you build an integration, the template is already there. You don't have to do much of work. You just have to take the template and you have to create the integration and send the data. So in this case, it is called as Cloud Connect. Okay, it's an inbuilt integration. When there is a tie up between a X part, uh, ABC company, ABC payroll company, or ABC benefits company, or ABC whatever company, but there is a tie up with Workday, there is a template available. In that case, the work of integration becomes easy. But if there is no tie up, XYZ company, there is no tie up with Workday. In that case, we have to request for the template. We have to do the modifications and all that. Okay. And then we send the data. Okay. Yes. So Workday works on software as a service. We all know, we all started with, uh, when we started our Workday functional classes, we learned that Workday is a software as a service. SaaS, S-A-A-S. What do you mean by software as a service? It provides a software to the clients. It gives the software to the client and it says you can use the software by paying some charges and you can configure it. You can do a custom configuration as per your requirement. Okay. So this public web service, which I was telling you, public web service API, this public web service API is nothing but Write it down. It's an interview question. What is web services in Workday or public web services in Workday or SOAP, SOAP, SOAP services in Workday. Okay. So all these three terms are same. Public web services, web services, SOAP web services. All these three are same. It has this, it, it is the same. What happens in this, this is, you give a request in an XML format to Workday asking for a data and it gives you back an output in an XML format. Okay, you request for a data, you get a response. This happens in XML. It is already built. Everything is there in Workday itself. You just have to pick the right uh, XML code which is there already in Workday and you have to request for it. And then the, you will receive a response from Workday system itself with the output data. For example, you are requesting for a name and a phone number and an address. Workday will give you name, phone and address of the employee. What is custom web services? Custom web services are nothing but we use reports. In our previous classes last week, we created some reports, advanced reports, and I told you we enable it for web services, right? When we enable it for web services, we use that report in an integration and we send the data to third party system. That's called as custom web services or REST, R-E-S-T, REST web services, okay? You have to enable the web service in the report in order to use it. Now, these integrations are not just with benefits and payroll. There are many purposes of the integration based on the company you are working for, based on the requirement, based on the automations they do. Integration is nothing but automation. Okay. So based on the requirement, based on uh, what they are asking for, you have to build an integration. This integration can be for LDAPs. It can be for payroll, for benefits or for, with any other application or with any cloud applications, SAP, SAP is a cloud application or any other uh, in-house application, ServiceNow is an in-house app. So the interaction between two systems, Workday and XYZ system for whatever purpose, benefits, payroll, uh, employee ID, LDAP, okay, Active Directory, for any purpose is called an integration. So what is an integration? An integration is a bridge between two systems, Workday and some other target system where you send and receive data. There are two types of integrations. We have outbound integration. Anything which goes 
out of work day is called as outbound integration. Anything which comes inside work day is called inbound integration. We use oxygen tool. I told you last time to download that tool, 30 days free. Uh, trial is available and uh, you can use that for XML, XSLT conversion and all that. So this is an integration architecture overview. We already saw this, but then not in detail. Let's see this in detail. What happens in outbound? So let's say Workday has all the data, all the data of an employee. Work, Workday has worker data, it has personal data, payroll data, finance data, talent data, performance data, absence data, time off data, time tracking data, all this data is stored in Workday for every, for every employee. We all know that all this data is stored in, is in an object, okay? In Workday, every data is stored in a business object. So if you have to send this data outside Workday, you have to use web services or reports, okay? Web services is nothing but APIs. I told you it request and a response or report. You create a custom report, enable it for web services and use it. Either of the way, the data is going out of Workday system. Okay. And it is called as outbound integration. How is the data getting transferred? There are different methods. Okay, there are different methods, write it down. It's an interview question. There are different methods for sending the data from Workday to third party system. Also receiving the data into Workday. These methods are FTP, SFTP, SOAP or REST services or attachments. Okay, FTP, SFTP, it's just a medium of transportation. As in, there is a server with the uh, XYZ company. They will give you the username and password. They will tell you which folder it has to go and sit. What is the file name? You just have to use that username and password. Key in the username and password. Use the directory, the folder uh, location and send the data. Now you'll ask me, how would you send the data? You are telling me, send the data, send the data. So when you do a configuration, all this is a part of configuration. You enter the username, you enter the password, you enter PGP certificate, which is an extra layer, PGP certificate, which is an extra layer of security. And you click on OK. When you launch the integration, that's what I mean by, when you launch it, that's what I mean by sending the data. Okay, when you launch it, the integration runs, it sends the data to third party system because you have given the FTP, SFTP link, username and password. Okay, like how you have a IP address, same way FTP, SFTP has a same similar kind of a link. So you, the data goes to that system using that username and password. SOAP REST services, also works the same way. You use a report, it's called REST. If you use an API, which is built in the Workday system, it is called as SOAP or public web services. Or no problem, just down, build an integration, run the integration, download the data, send it as an attachment. Got it? Any questions on this? What is the difference between Workday and other RDBMS systems? So the data in Workday is stored in business object. And these business objects use report data sources. These reports are uh, class report fields. We use fields. We have built reports in our previous classes. So we built fields. And then there are related business objects and instances. But in RDMS, okay, RDMS is a database. So in RDMS, you call business object as table and records. We call report data sources as view. 
we call fields as column. We call RBOs as child tables and records. And instances, we call it as row. This is just for your information. There's nothing into work day for it, just for your information. Inbound. Integrations can be inbound where data from the target system is imported into Workday. So let's say you are sending employee data to payroll system. The payroll has run and it has sent the salary. Now it is in the third party system. How would an employee know whether his salary is credited if he wants to check in Workday system? How will he know? Because it is run in the third party system. He cannot see that in Workday. Okay, showing, showing that, okay, this much of salary is credited on this much, this date. He cannot see. So there should be an update in Workday system as well. For this purpose, and also there are other purposes as well for inbound. Once the data goes to payroll, payroll will process the data and then it will send another integration into Workday system to update the Workday system with the details. That's an inbound integration. The same concept as we saw for outbound, you see there is a SFTP server rest and it comes inside, it uses the web services and it places the data in the respective business objects. Okay, in outbound, we were taking the data from object. In inbound, we are placing the data in the object. Any questions on this? So what has happened last time is that I was, I was in assumption that all this is already explained to you uh, during demo session. Okay, so I directly jumped into the integration, right? So then I realized it is not. So let's go through this and then we will jump into reports and integration. So what are these Workday integration tools? Workday has several tools for building these bridges between Workday and external system like Cloud Connect or custom integrations. We already know what is Cloud Connect and what is custom integration in our previous slide. Cloud Connect, uh, custom integration is nothing but we create a report and we send the data. Cloud Connect is something which is already there in Workday, APIs. It's already there in Workday. Different types of integrations in Workday. So write it down. What are the different types of integrations in Workday? We have Cloud Connects. These are packaged integrations, okay? Cloud Connect, these are packaged integration built for particular vendors. I told you, right, an example that if there is a tie-up between ABC company and Workday, there is a template already there from ABC company inside Workday itself, okay? We just use that template, we get the data and we send it, simple. That's called as Packaged integrations, got it? Packaged integration. If there is no data, if there is no template, sorry, not data, if there is no template because there is no tie up with the company XYZ, in that case is where we will build an integration called as custom integrations, okay? So coming back, we have two types of integrations, Cloud Connect, which is packaged integrations with the vendors and core connectors. Okay, core connectors, write it down, core connectors. And then the other integration is Workday custom integrations. In this custom integration is where we will use the APIs and EIBs and document transformation and Workday Studio. Okay, so there are different types of integration. One is packaged integration, core connectors, APIs, EIBs, document transformation, Workday Studio. One, two, three, four, five, six. Got it? different types of integration.
okay these cloud connects you know the the, the packaged integrations what are these so a pre-built integration to common applications and service providers that extend workday functionality to certain functional areas. There is a pre-built integration already, okay, to the applications and the service providers, which means ABC company has a tie up with Workday. They have given a template. We can use that template and we can send the data. That's called packaged. Packaged integrations, fully designed end-to-end -end integrations to a specific named third-party application or service. All the configurations are available. No additional coding is required because the template is already there. You can, while configuring the integration, you can use the template itself and just select the fields which you want to send and launch the integration. That's it. Core connectors are nothing but they are pre-built integration templates, which addresses the majority of integration efforts. Core connectors are also pre-built integrations. We will see what is the difference between core connector and normal integration. We will see that. For now, you just understand what is core connector, what is packaged integration. Okay, but there is a difference. Pre-built integration templates, which addresses the majority of the integration efforts. Configuration with some customization allowed. Often, no additional coding is required. Cloud Connect for benefits. So, the same example. Let's say ABC company is a benefits provider. What type of benefits does it provide? It has a tie up with Workday. What type of benefits it provides? So for all that, it will have separate, separate templates for medical and dental, separate template, life and ADDI insurance, Cobra insurance, disability for everything. There is a separate template. Same way for core connector. Also, there is a separate template. This slide talks about the same thing. Uh, custom integrations. Custom integrations are nothing but APIs, EIBs, document transformation and studio. We have to configure all of these integrations individually for different purposes. Okay, for some purpose, you will configure API. For some other reason, you will configure Enterprise Interface Builder, EIB, Enterprise Interface Builder. Write it down. You should remember it. Okay, Enterprise Interface Builder. For some configuration, you will do Studio. And document transformation is used to send the data to the respect. API is nothing but there is a web service already available. Okay. In Workday, there are APIs, there are web, ser web services, APIs are same. Okay. So don't get confused when I say API or web service. Both are same. So there are web services available in Workday system. Workday itself has lots of web services. We just have to choose the right web service and send the data. What is RAS? RAS is nothing but if we use a report instead of a web service, we use a report. When we use a report and enable it for web service, that becomes RAS, report as a service. What is an EIB? EIB has inbound and outbound. Inbound EIB is Enterprise Interface Builder. EIB is nothing but whenever you need to load a huge amount of data in Workday system. Okay. Let's say you want to hire 100 employees or you want to terminate 50 employees or you want to update credit card transactions for 100 employees or you want to assign roles for 100 employees or you want to add location hierarchies for 100, for 100 locations, you will use inbound template, okay? We will create a spreadsheet we will use that spreadsheet 
and we will load that into workday that becomes inbound but if the same thing has to go outside workday it will be called as outbound i told you in our previous class that there is a little bit of coding which is required to uh, convert the xml to xslt right xml to xslt xslt okay in the xslt workday has two functions for validation of data write it down it's an interview question very important question for validation of data error checking and formatting text for validation of data error checking valid and formatting of text there are two workday functions which you will use when you are building an xslt the function is called as etv element transformation and validation xtt xml to text so if there is any validation of data or error checking you have to use etv and if there is any conversion from xml to text you have to use xtt it's a very important interview question okay studio i'm not going to say a word on studio for now because when we talk about studio we will do it separately okay this uh, introduction to workday is just for uh, packaged integrations custom integrations which are apis eibs document transformation and workday studio workday studios introduction we will have at the end okay introduction and some basic concepts and how the page looks and all that we will have at the end of the session when we are done with all the integrations i will take one class for workday studio workday studio is very huge very very huge and very complex very complex so it is it is altogether a separate module actually it's it altogether separate it will take very long time to uh, study workday studio but as a part of this course we will have an introduction to workday studio and we will learn the various components various options which we have in workday studio any question so far okay these are the definitions okay when i click on it it gets downloaded i'm opening it just to see how it looks okay it's opening usually takes time to load oxygen
see it shows 24 days left. This is the WST, uh, WSTL definition of human resource. So let me, um, you know, it, it looks like a mess, right? I mean, too confusing. You cannot read it. So you just do control A and click on this. Hopefully it should be fine now. Operations in progress. Okay, see, now I can read it. Now I can read all of this. See, the WSTL is so big. So big. It has so many lines. How many lines it has? 8,000 lines. So what is this WSDL? This is nothing but the fields which is stored. This is a business side, validation fault, organization reference ID, custom uh, organization structure. All these are different, different fields. You work on information get location all, all these are different different fields we are not going to do anything with this i'm just showing you how it looks okay don't worry we're not going to do anything with this wsdl this just has the fields lots and lots and lots of field of all the worker related information our work 